Cancer doesn't grow up to about 10 percent. That's kind of neat. Footy's doing some good stuff. It's growing these animals. They're living well. Everything's fine, but when they exceed the 10 percent or so, that's when the mission starts. So you say, well, what does that mean? I mean, there's there something seen. Have you about that? Well, it turns out there is. And I think this is a really, really interesting lesson that comes out of this. Namely, the first thing that we have to do is make the slide change. Um, the first thing is say, where we where lost humans on this scale of things? It turns out that rats and humans, they need they need about the same amount of protein. Now, some of us are more like rats than others, but we're, we're basically <laughs> You know, considering about, we need about the same amount of protein, about 10%, 8, 9, 10%, something like that. And so here is, uh, here's where we are on the scale of things, right there. The human tradition, human consumption, we're consuming between 10, 11% or so, up to about 25%. It's pretty high. We're, we're living in there, and there's the danger zone, if you will, if all this stuff means anything. That's what it's suggesting. So then we operate with that idea, work on it a little bit, uh, and finally, I got to this point, again, jumping over a whole bunch of stuff involving not just cancer, but other diseases and so forth. And here's, here's the bottom line. Here's this curve that exists. And incidentally, for those of you who are studying in the area of nutrition, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say ghost response, because it tends to happen with all nutrients. We have an ideal level of the nutrient intake that keeps us nice and healthy. If you get too low, you got problems. If you get too much, you got problems. Okay, I think you can apply that idea. So what we're talking about here is looking at a larger context, that curve. And so same thing I just showed you that we got from the rats, and I'm calling it general health in this case. So it, it seems to apply to a lot of things, if you will, different kinds of responses. Now I want to put this in some context in, in reference to some numbers that you may have heard of, know something about. Maybe a youth, I don't know. Uh, the amount of protein that we determined in science that was necessary for good health was determined many years ago. In 1943, in the United States, to be exact, that was an official recommendation. We need about somewhere around 4 to 5 percent protein. Maybe a little more during growth, but that's all we really need 4 to 5 percent protein. That's the minimum amount needed to match the amount of protein lost for example, from our body on a daily basis. They took that number way back in 1943. That was the mean. And so they just did on the safe side. They added two standard deviations to that, jacked it up some. They added a couple of adjustment factors. They wanted to make sure that everybody got their protein based on that research. So they ended up, you know, by doing all of that, they ended up with the so-called recommended dietary allowance. Well, the recommended dietary allowance was set and has been reviewed officially now 14 times since 1943. Nobody's ever tampered with it. This is solid science. This is it. So they end up with a with a the amount of protein that is recommended dietary allowance, the RDA of the protein is around, it could force that around 9, 10 percent. Oh, now we interesting. See, because that, that recommended amount is right there that threshold. And what does that tell us? If you, if you know anything about statistics and normal curves and stuff like that, when, when we say that we're setting two standard, standard deviations above the mean, that what that tells us more or less that at least 98% of us in theory are going to have plenty of protein. In other words, we need less than that 10%. So that 10% is a good, safe figure. And that serves, serves as a test of time over the years. Because, however, so many people just want to make sure that they have, they fill themselves with protein as much as they can. Uh, they tend to assume that recommended dietary allowance is the minimum amount. Not true. You'll see that in advertising. You know, you're going to get 10% protein or you're not going to die or something like this. No, that 10% protein is the ideal level. Then you say you say to yourself, well, what's, what kind of food are we going to get? What kind of food are we going to consume to get that protein? Until this time, mostly, or as public opinion is concerned. Until this time, most people thought protein is meat. Right? Protein is meat, period. It's synonymous. Well, it turns out plants have protein. They got nice protein. That was actually discovered in the late 1800s. But like, during their history, they kind of, really kind of got beaten back that idea. Oh, that's low quality. That doesn't, you know, just this and that. That's the way it was. So 
we always kept, somebody was behind us always telling us that protein we need probably comes from animal foods, and that justified, in fact, the consumption of animal foods all those years. So, and let's look at this curve a little more carefully. There's a, there's a big lesson here. Big lesson. Namely, it turns out if we're consuming only plants, whole plants, vegetables, fruits, grains, legumes, and stuff like that, we get a level of protein just natural. It's nature. It's a nature work. The amount of protein we get is very nicely satisfied with that kind of diet. We don't need more protein than that. I mean, if we, we can construct our diet a little with some of these plants and maybe jack the protein a little higher, it's okay, because when you do that, it's not the protein that's going to cause the problems, because the plants have other things in them that can the protection, that kind of thing. It's all nature at work. So here's the plants are. We live in that zone there. Tell me about a justification. You know, it's just for the protein, but then it turns out it's not just about protein. This protein thing is just kind of give us a hint of where we ought to be. Um, it turns out we can suck, but we don't eat that way. We toss in some animal food. We toss in a little bit, most of us a lot. We put some animal food in here, and I'm just showing here, just, just a little bit of animal food. When you add animal food, bring it up maybe, in theory, up to 11, 12% or so. And remember, when you're doing that, you're kind of cutting down the protein of plant food. So you're getting less of the, of the plant, vegetables, right? So we, well, and well, this time we'll work around and get more animal food in there. Now we're getting up into some little higher levels of protein. It's really important. We're getting the right kind. But by so doing, look at it. We're subtracting plant food. And the process, yeah, we get more total protein, but a higher percentage of it is becoming from animal-based food. Now let's look at what some of us like to do. We don't really make our diet just, we want to be carnivores. We've got to everything. We've got to do it the right way. 